Good evening. It's been hailed as a project for the 21st century, a flagship to increase the productivity of the West Midlands. But some firms say they're being forced off their land by the High Speed 2 development before receiving any money. Some companies say the cost of relocation has almost forced them to close. As others say they simply can't afford to move and that HS2 has not given them the help it promised. In a moment, we'll be speaking to a landlord who says he's ready to take drastic action. But first, Callum Watkinson has this report. This wood processing company is a family firm built from scratch by a couple in Birmingham and passed on to their daughter three years ago. Hard-working and mindful of her 27 employees, Carly Sitek is definitely a chip off the old block. But after HS2 bought her yard from her landlord, she had to move with just three months' notice. And the £300,000 that cost nearly buried her business. It's hand to mouth at the moment. Week, week by week we're going by, just about scraping by, paying the bills. But I still haven't paid some of the bills now that I've from the move. Everybody's very nervous. Everybody felt really nervous whether their jobs were safe at Christmas time. Obviously we've got suppliers waiting for payments still. And, you know, and everybody feels that and everyone's nervous whether they're still going to have a job or not. Dragged out of retirement, Carly's dad Paul is back at work because he had to raise £100,000 from his own pension pot to keep his daughter going. And six months after the move, the bills are still stacking up as the new site is still being adapted. This is a well-run company. They've been trading for 30 years and they had responsibly built up a £200,000 contingency fund for emergencies. Well, that's gone now and they're still having to fork out to make this site suitable for their operation. HS2 was quick to promise help with relocation. Actual payments were endlessly delayed. Fully up and running. Carly did eventually get £45,000 by turning up in London unannounced and refusing to leave. But that didn't last her very long. HS2. That 45 grand has just gone straight back to the VAT man to keep us going, to keep us afloat. In Leeds today, to trumpet the benefits HS2 might one day bring to South Yorkshire, the project's outgoing chief executive said compensating those affected was a huge task. In stage one alone, we have um, 11,000 uh, properties, parcels of land to purchase. So to put that into perspective, that's 10 times the amount of property we purchased over two years for the Olympics, 10 times. We've already purchased over 20% of all property we need uh, and we've done an enormous amount of both um, compensation uh, and, and CPO. I think we've done over 1,200 claims in compensation. As reports continue to roll in, though, of small businesses driven to the edge, there is growing anger in Birmingham that a project intended to create jobs is, in the process, threatening them. Callum Watkinson, ITV News. Well, joining us now is Darren Bartlett, a landlord from Saltley in Birmingham, who's also having similar problems with HS2. Darren, thank you for joining us. Can you just explain to us your situation? Uh, yes, we were supposed to hand our property over to HS2 last week, a week today actually, and uh, unfortunately we haven't been made offers. The tenants haven't been made offers. They're supposed to be compensated to help them move and move on to properties, other properties that they've actually tried to acquire. They haven't got the funds to move, so they're refusing to leave. And I haven't been made an offer, and I'm refusing to leave. So, Darren, I think you're right, I'm right in saying you, you're supposed to be out tomorrow. You're refusing to leave. What are you actually going to do when tomorrow comes around? No, we're supposed to be out last Thursday, not tomorrow. We're supposed to be out last Thursday. HS2 turned up on the 12th of July at 2.30 to take possession of the property, and we refused to hand over keys. Are you willing to sort of dig your heels in over this, Darren? I think we need to because there's lots of people who are going to be affected by this up and down the country. It's happened in London. I've, I've had lots of people contact me, including the Trotmans that you've just done a report on. I think someone needs to make a stand because they're acting absolutely lawlessly. Darren, HS2 wouldn't speak to us specifically about your case, but they did say in a statement tonight that they fully understand it's a very disruptive process, but they say the compulsory purchase process puts the onus on the owner of the property to provide the evidence to substantiate their claim for compensation. What do you make of that? 
Well, it's all smoke and mirrors, really, because if HS2 had entered into negotiations with us a year ago, as what we thought they would be doing, then we wouldn't have had any complications and obviously the com compensation claim would have gone through. But if they don't talk to you and negotiate with you, you can't negotiate a deal. So at the last minute, it's a game of brinkmanship and they just come in and they just want to take your keys, ultimately. Now, Dan, what's, what's the worst that can happen in your situation then? How far are you prepared to push this? What if the bailiffs turn up? Well, I, can't, I find it very hard to believe the bailiffs could come onto my property and evict me from my property that HS2 has not purchased off me and charged me for the pleasure of it. I find that very hard to believe. Uh, well, Darren, we know it's a very difficult situation for you. We thank you very much for talking to us on the programme this evening. Good luck with it. Thanks, Darren. Thank you very much. Uh, well, if you've been in a similar position, you've heard some of the stories there about people uh, like Darren, do get in touch with us uh, the usual ways. Get in touch with us on social media or uh, drop us an email or give us a call. Our, our details are on our website. We'd like to hear your story. Yes, now on to our UK-wide...